Welcome to TGIF. I think we can agree, and I think they would agree, that we all like to feel loved. Absolutely. We like to feel safe. Most of us like to be successful. And there's nothing wrong with those things. But I think that we believe that when we have those things, that we're living a life of takes us to the word of the day, which is prosperity. And again, there's nothing wrong with wanting to feel safe and loved, but I think we, we are gleaning that from the world or from a significant other or a loved one. We're not looking at it as a life of prosperity being only what God can give us and that our love and our security is within him. I mean, there's a there's a rub there. There's a push. Yes, there is. And I think that, that you take us to a good place, too, in this conversation, because when we talk about prosperity and prosperity theology, because there's plenty of churches out there that preach a prosperity theology, but it's still about acquiring and, and growing more and more of, of, of the worldly stuff, mm -hmm. rather than saying, no, my prosperity is in God. It is focused in God. And that is what we are looking at in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 5. The Lord your God will return you to your ancestors, and you will possess that land again. Then he will make you even more prosperous and numerous than your ancestors. Again, we're in the section of Deuteronomy. Remember, we just pulled out of Moses trying to give them a, a good grounding of what lies ahead and trying to encourage Stay connected to God. Don't lose your focus on God. No matter what happens around you, Focus on God. You're going into a land, and oh, by the way, you're going to be even more prosperous. And they, I, you know, I wonder in that moment for the people listening to that, it's like, oh wow, you know, we're going to get more land, more money, more lots goats. of extra milk and honey and all of yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's that's what I would think a lot of us think today. And I think that what Moses is really trying to say, no, your prosperity is going to be focused and it's going to be grounded in who God is in mm. this new land because you're going to be a chosen people, and you know, we live in a world where prosperity is defined by, you know, who you know, how much money you have, and the things you have. And that is so much different than the prosperity that uh, Moses is trying to line out for them and describe for them. And the reality is we, we all have kind of a basic need, starting point, you might say, that certain things have to be met before we can start to feel like we are prospering or mm -hmm. getting ahead. And so those cat there's seven of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they are feeling safe. I am safe, I'm secured, I'm loved, I'm wanted, I'm successful, I'm good enough, and do I have a purpose? So there's seven of them there that really starts us in our, our conversation here today about prosperity and focusing on what Moses was trying to help the people of God to understand. And we bring it around this idea of circumcision as well. And I think that that's what's the big challenging because God's people were set apart through circumcision. And this metaphor is going to bleed into uh, verse 6 and talking about circumcising your heart. Mm. Okay. Now, this begins to make sense to me because uh, we know that by circumcising the heart, we're exposing it. We're getting rid of all of this prosperity understanding that I have and getting back to the heart. Do I feel safe? The disciples in that boat, out there on the water, everything's going crazy. Jesus is asleep. What? What? How? How can this be? Save us, Jesus. It's save us. We always seem to be in that mode when the storm is around. Save us, Jesus. Save us, Jesus. Rather than saying, no, I am safe because I'm a believer and I believe in God's story and I'm secure and I know that I'm loved because God created me. So those seven categories really begin to framework how, before you can even begin to understand what prosperity even means and what mm -hmm. Moses is describing. Mm -hmm. And keeping it separate from the prosperity we know that is in the world or the prosperity preaching that's out there that kind of leads you to believe this kind of life you'll live, you know, when you give and when you serve and, and the results of that might not look like what you want. Yes, God's going to bless you when you give and serve and out of his greater purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. But I think we think that the return is going to look like how we want it to. And sometimes it's not. Yeah. Often it's probably not 
things don't end like we planned. That's a good point because so many stories we see, they do not end. The mm -hmm. final story is so much different. And a lot of times it's in tragedy. But again, too, we have to look at here, first world versus third world. So, I mean, first world problems are ridiculous sometimes compared <laughs> to third world problems. And mm -hmm. we overlook you know, I am so secure, I need to help the third world. I need to help other communities. Mm -hmm. I need to help other people. I need God to circumcise my heart and truly put me on His purpose mm -hmm. for my life. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's hard. I think that's a big challenge. First and third world problems. So let's remember, we're living in the first world here. We've got mm -hmm. a lot of, of grace and uh, beautiful things around us, but it's we're kind of remembering back to what John Wesley taught. John Wesley taught us it is so important that we have a social holiness and Social holiness is the seven things we just talked about being lived out in community. And when you can live that out in community, you begin to take the focus off of, of you and what you want and how you, only if I get this will I feel secure. Only if I get this will I know that I'm loved or, you know, am I ever good enough? You know, in mm -hmm. the eyes of the world, you're probably mm -hmm. never good enough. We That's get beaten so down just about every day in one of those categories. Exactly. You know, someone at work makes us mad or you get a phone call from someone and she's not really offering much on that phone call that makes you start questioning like, well, wait a second. You know, uh, there's just so many times that we we try to get our, our, um, our, our, our significance and our importance, we reach for it from things and people. When this prosperous life is a life lived for God, getting rid of, just like you said, all of the stuff and knowing that he has the great plan and it's perfect. It and how do we live into that? So when we're having those days of not feeling we have that life of prosperity, we have to remember if we're a child of God and live into being a child of God, we're all child of God, but meaning, Lord, I am your child. And I surrender everything to you, then we can enjoy the prosperity that God gives us and promises us. And it's not defined by those circumstances around us and the things happening in our life. Yeah. It's hard. And it, we're talking about doing this all in community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and once one person gets upset in a community or holds mm -hmm. a grudge against somebody in the community, mm -hmm. it's hard to move forward. And that's why I think that the faith community is important because we got to live it out in our daily lives. We are in community of people. But in that faith community, how do we how do we connect and become stronger and supporting and encouraging each other? So when we go out into our own communities, if you will, and that's why we've said before is like that small group connection where you're connecting with people that you're just doing life with to maybe kind of reel you in or help you shed that junk when you kind of get wrapped up in more the prosperity of the world and in our culture versus the prosperity that God has promised, that we are those things in Him. We are successful, we are safe, we are loved, we are wanted, and we have purpose. But even when the world's beating us down, exactly. God still says we have those things. So how do we... Do that. Easy? No. Or everybody would be doing it and everything would be going great. So the question we leave you with is, where's the question? Oh, there it is. <laughs> How will you live into prosperity this day with a circumcised heart for God? Wow. And in that vision of that, just that, that all the stuff gone, like cutting away all of those things, Hurts, the woundedness, mm -hmm. the things that just make you so mad and angry. Mm -hmm. Because we love God through his word so that we can go live this life of holiness. Yeah. I mean, do you think of yourself as living a life of holiness? That's not just reading your Bible and knowing your scripture. Mm -hmm. That's not a life of holiness. How you live and pour into others is part of all of that. I mean, that's what Deuteronomy has been doing mm -hmm. for us. I mean, that's there was a lot of chapters in there that you know we we can win over a lot of stuff, and it's it's like really it's getting back to this. You are a people set apart by God, and mm -hmm. you are special, and you're meant to go out into the world, and you've been circumcised because you are set apart, and your heart is for me, the Lord, mm -hmm. rather than yourself. Mm -hmm. So challenge yourself each and every day as you wake up, reminding yourself that I am set apart for God today.
my heart has been circumcised for God and then allow him to work in and through you. Make it a great week and finish off Deuteronomy would be your homework for episode four next week. See you soon. Bye. Bye.